It is the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show right here on 860 AM WNOV and W293CX106.5. Wherever you may be listening, however you may be listening, whether those through those particular stations, the TuneIn app, the Simple Radio app, the radio tab on the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website, social media, or anywhere in between. We are live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I am your host, Joy Barrett. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner, Holly which is good bugs in our garden. And there's a list of good bugs. Now, let's go with – There's we talked about bad bugs this, a couple of weeks ago, and that's on the website and on the, the segment uh, portion on the website. But good bugs. If you have good bugs and you have bad bugs, you have a balanced ecosystem, and you don't have to do a whole lot. You don't have to add or use chemicals to control bugs. Now, the thing with chemicals, whether they're organic, inorganic, whatever, they're, they're, not, they're not selective. They will kill everything that they come in contact with. There is not a, an insect repellent out there or, or a, a bad bug that's strictly focused on one specific insect. It, it affects a lot of bugs when you use an insecticide on your garden. So let's go about these good bugs. And some of you know some of these good bugs and some of these may be new. The, the common everybody knows is the ladybug. That's number one. Now, you don't want to get the ladybug confused with that annoying Japanese beetle. So definitely keep in mind that there are ways to attract the ladybugs. And they ladybugs eat aphids, they eat white flies, and then they also eat the Colorado potato beetles. So instead of scra- uh, squishing the Colorado potato beetle, you can have ladybugs. Now, William Moss is coming on to Bob in the hour, and he will talk about beneficial insects with him because at his community garden, they're going to re- have a beneficial insect release this afternoon in Chicago. So we're going to ask him about uh, some of that and uh, how to, how to, what his tips are on bringing them in. Right. So with ladybugs, one thing you can do is you can, uh, they're attracted to dill, dandelions, uh, fern, ferns and then a plant called basket of gold so don't kill your don't do that weed and feed with your dandelions right uh leave those and that also feeds the bees that's the first pollen or the first food that the bees are able to uh gather in the uh the spring but yeah ladybugs yeah you can mail order these you can release them but there is some challenges well, let's talk about talk about maybe why you don't why you would rather attract them than as opposed to purchasing them and trying to keep them around. Okay. So you can release them. You can buy them on online services and they fifteen hundred for a couple of dollars. But you'd want to bring them in because they're native to your area. If you release them and do it properly, yes, some will hang around your garden. But again, they're not all gonna hover that the fifteen hundred around your garden till the end of the season. They're going to explore the environment. If you bring them in, they will see that there's there's food there, there's an environment there in which they can live and they hang around your garden and that's one way in which you can benefit uh bringing natives in rather than buying and purchasing natives and and put in your garden right so one way that we'd mention is by the different um those different plants and flowers now let's go to the next one here because this one it's called a ground beetle it's not to to the common ordinary individual it looks like a bad bug it looks like well it's something you don't want in your house i I would assume for most people they would try to extract it it is a black uh, multi-legged antenna ground looks like a beetle looks like a beetle right uh, right. it, it preys on slugs, caterpillars, ca- the, the California or the Colorado potato beetle again, and cutworms. Cutworms are those insects that gnaw the plant down like a chainsaw, the seedlings at the early portions of the growing season or during the, the seedling stage. Right. So they are attracted to one easy flower here to grow is the amaranthus and then also clover. And a lot of us have clover. Native white clover. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can also purchase that, I believe, at migardener.com, uh, the white clover. But, yeah, that's that's a, a native bug that you can have and you may already have in your garden. And if you're not seeing a whole lot of pest problems, you're not seeing aphids on your plants or the Colorado potato beetle eating your – stuff like that, you've probably already got these beneficial insects. And, and a lot of these bugs, good bugs, are not going to introduce themselves to you in the garden. They're going to do their native hide during the day and feed in the evening, that type of thing. They're not going to make themselves aware because that's not the characteristics of these insects to, hey, everybody, I'm right here because there are predators that feed on them. Right. So also um, you want, one thing to also attract these good bugs is to take a shallow dish – you can put like a layer of small rocks or pebbles, add water to cover 
about the bottom half of these rocks, and then you put that on the ground or on your garden, and the insects will come and they'll drink from it. That will also help the bees because right. they can land on the rock. They don't drown mm-hmm. as well as birds, and right. that will also kind of decrease the opportunity that the birds will peck holes in your tomatoes because they're having a water source available. And you can, I mean, you can make that. You know, real simple or real pretty. You right. could use different, like, decorative rocks. Or and when whatnot. you do that, be sure you check on that because the water evaporates and you need that water in there. And, again, we're supposed to be very, very warm this week. If you have plants in containers or in the ground, don't forget about them because by Tuesday or Wednesday next week, you will have very nice dead plants. So be sure you water. That's You just got to do that. I know it's a, a common sense thing, but I, I want to remind people because we have to remind ourselves, hey, we've got containers. We've got to remember to water them uh, on our own garden and, and hanging baskets so that's a, another thing and then beneficial insects also like ground cover um, during the day they can they usually will need protection especially during warm days like we're gonna even have if you just bust them uh, dry grass clippings some shredded leaves uh, uh, some straw some shredded paper just something that they can get underneath and, and supply some of their uh, needs of uh, coolness uh, on that what's another one um, another one is a green lace wing and I've seen these. If you're not familiar with them, I'm sure you've seen them. You don't realize. So they're, these are native to Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. And so they eat aphids, uh, white flies, leaf hoppers, and mealybugs. And they are attracted by dill, um, angelica, and coriander, and golden marguerite. So uh, the common thing seems to be that dill does attract good bugs. But dill is but very, dill is <laughs> invasive. very invasive. Yeah. So you may that's something you may want to put near your garden. In a container, and then before it goes to seed, right. catch it, because otherwise you're going to end up with a lot of dill. A lot of dill that you don't want that continues to come back and takes years to get rid of it. Uh, let's go another one. What's another one here that we can uh, have? The Bracketon, Bracketon wasp. Let's talk about that one, because people may not be familiar with the remnants that it once was there once they see what happens to the tomato hornworm. Right. So you may not see the bracketed wasp necessarily, but you might see its little cocoons. And so say you have a tom- tomato hornworm, which is a type of caterpillar, that those that's what eats your tomatoes, and they're these green, um, kind of long but chubby. Inch to two inch in, inch to two in length yeah, with, probably, a no, half, three inches. with a half inch horn that right. curves. Yeah, so they, the bracketed wasp will use that them as a host. So if you find this little green guy with these little white cocoons, probably about a, these cocoons are probably about a millimeter tall, all over it, that means that the the tomato hornworm is pretty much dead, and the bracket of wasp is now the eggs, using it. The eggs are feeding off right. the internal portions of the tomato hornworm. And those worm. wasps also do eat, um, they also eat aphids as well. So they eat the bad caterpillars and things of that sort, and they eat the aphids. Uh, We've got time for one more. Let's get And you can attract them by using lemon balm, parsley, and then yarrow. Okay. Well, one more. What do we got here? Beneficial insects in your garden. And, and these are just a small list. There's dozens upon dozens, and we just picked some of the more uh, familiar ones to have in your garden. Is um, I guess instead of picking, um, instead of picking one, okay. we can also talk about how it's important to also, you know, talk to your neighbors. If you're in a, a clo- you have close neighbors that you want to explain to them about them spraying chemical pesticides and why why you want to track the good bugs and why build you a relationship kind of build a relationship and say hey i understand you you like this and you want your lawn to look perfect that's great however um, maybe there's a better time of day for them to to spray that and stuff and some people will like and, and and on that topic there some people will spray chemicals on the windiest day they don't care because they're thinking the job is getting completed even in big ag industry the major chemical Distri- sprayers the, in big farm, uh, farmers will hire corporations to come in and spray. That's these corporations' job. That's all that they do all summer long, spray these herbicides and pesticides. If the wind is exceeding a certain mile per hour, they will not spray. That's they're part of their requirement right. for the for – the, Well, then uh, also the difference is, is that if you're spraying it and it's above 70 degrees – it can affect it them. Can, it, it doesn't necessarily even cling to the plants. It actually just floats around in the air. So and that's, and people breathe them in. Your pets right. bring them in, uh, breathe it in. Your kids breathe it in, and it's uh, bad for everybody. If you're in the Milwaukee or surrounding areas, just tune your radio to 860 AM or FM 106.5. You can also find links on our Facebook pages, The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener and Home Canning. Our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, click on the radio tab at the top of the page, 
Then click on the Listen Live button and you'll have immediately access to our live program. Mobile devices work very well also. Go to your app store and download for free the TuneIn app or the simple radio app. Then search WNOV 860, save it to your favorites, and you can have access to our radio show live wherever you're at in the world. Our radio program will also have podcast replay under the radio tab day, uh, several days following the live broadcast. You can find all of these links in the show notes below. Our show airs 9 to 10 a.m. Central Standard Time every Saturday, March through the end of October. And we want to thank our sponsors because without them, this would not be anywhere possible. You can find all of their links under the radio tab on our website at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.